Hey, sir. Hey, Star News. How are we doing? Good, sir. Peyton Seller is winner. I tell you what, 14 attempts at this, right? Too many. I lost count a long time ago. <laughs> How about you got the Clarence Steakhouse uh, gear on? They're, they're, they're really celebrating over there right now. You got that right. We're going to eat some steak tonight for sure. And uh, we had to change the colors on this car after 20 years to make it happen, I guess. So it'll be back next year with an orange car. And we, um, Clarence Pickles put a lot into Martinsville Speedway. He's had a lot of cars here for a lot of years. And to keep that Ridgeway clock right here, it's amazing. So, uh, man, I'm just tickled to death. Where are you, you going to put the clock? We're going to put it right in where it belongs, right in that restaurant down the road. Oh, it's going in the restaurant? Absolutely. Absolutely. So will it be in there next week? It'll be in there tonight. <laughs> okay, awesome. Cool. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Winner, Peyton Sellers. Peyton, uh, you said uh, earlier when we were talking, this is uh, this is the apex moment, the, the greatest moment of your career. Uh, share a little about what this feels like, the journey, everything. So I used to ride the Jesse Jones hot dog truck with my grandpa to this track when I was a kid and sit in turn one and watch the races while he delivered hot dogs to all the hot dog stands. And uh, grew up coming to Martinsville, grew up coming to Clarence's Steakhouse. 20 years ago, Clarence Pickle asked me to drive his race car being a rookie driver. He had never done that before. He had guys like Paul Rafford, Richard Landreth, Satch Worley, Ray Hendrick, greats, greats in short track racing. And uh, all I've ever wanted to do is be a short track racer. No matter what I did, I, I wanted to be a, a Martinsville guy. I wanted to be a South Boston guy, you know, short tracker. And that's what it's all about. And uh, tonight you saw good racing. You saw professional drivers like Mike Looney, Carson Quabble. These guys just raced clean. They raced hard. And uh, to bring this clock home tonight, to, to Ridgeway and keep it here in Ridgeway. It's going to go in the steakhouse here pretty quick. And uh, it's just a huge, huge thing for me and my family to be right here right where we're at right, right now. And um, something I wouldn't trade for a million years. We'll open it up for questions. Sorry, with Barry. Yeah. Uh, Barry Richmond, P. Broughton Broadcasting Corporation. Peyton, those last laps and restarts how do they compare with uh, other critical races that you've been in uh for for tonight well we all know we, we watched the heat races we saw the the carnage out there in those and guys racing up front and, and getting caught up in wrecking and i told everybody i said your track's going to get good tonight it was very slick in the afternoon for the heat races and that's why that's why cars were wrecking it wasn't guys getting over the head just cars were slick and um the track gained a lot of grip tonight to know that i had the quality of drivers around me i felt comfortable but it's Martinsville. It's $32,000. It's a clock. It's a prestige that goes behind it. You, you expect anything. And when they called me clear off of turn two on that last restart, I said, whatever I do, I've got to put together a good three and four right here to get myself a little bit of breathing room coming to the white. And um, I hadn't been quite as good getting into one and through the center, but I could get a good run off, and I could just put the throttle down so good. So I knew if I could just get a little breathing room to get through one and two so I could put the throttle down coming down the back chute, um, we could keep them from striking on us, you know, and that's what it was all about, just getting just enough breathing room to where a guy couldn't slide off in there pretty deep and um, get you moved up the track. So, um, you know, I thought about all that stuff. My legs were cramping for the last 25 laps, and it was sure, and it was sure excitement. It, it was nothing else than that. Just uh, calves were cramping bad, and emotions were going, and uh, they give me the checkered flag, and I made another lap just because I didn't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go to Matt up front. So I guess the uh, Matt Weaver Racing America. I guess the the question is simple: Is the transaction of a national championship worth the grandfather clock? Uh, every day of the week. Every yeah. day of the week. Uh, this whole national championship thing has drained a lot of a lot of emotions out of me over the last four or five days. And you know, I don't want to say anything negative toward anybody, but um, it all happened so that we could be sitting right here where we're at right now. It's no doubt in my mind for that. If there's ever been a, an opportunity where somebody could take a negative and turn it into a positive, this was supposed to be here right now. There was a there was a hedge of protection around my car tonight that I can't explain. Things were just happening, you know, getting on the getting to the bottom, getting to the outside when I needed to, and um, that's what it takes to win Martinsville Speedway. I don't ever take this for granted. I don't ever take it for take it lightly. And uh, everybody says you deserve to win at Martinsville. You deserve it. Nobody deserves to win anything right now. You got to put in hard work and be at the right place at the right time. And we were there tonight. It seemed like um, every time we had a long run, like a longer than a 30, 40 lap run, uh, your car would fall off. Yep. So was was it a blessing for you to have that 25 lap and then several 
green white checkered style finishes <laughs> i had been a little critical of the last the, the 25 lap restart there over the last few months since they put it out i had been very critical of everybody about it because i just knew it was going to tear up a lot of cars and uh last year you know, we had a long green flag run with landon pimbledon and um I, I was a little critical of it but it played into my hands tonight the short runs definitely i fired off extremely well i could fire off and, and mike looney was better than me on a long run without a doubt he could just drive by me and, and set sail but we um we had a short run car and that's what it took here tonight but you guys were talking like Absolutely. Really lost and confused about what to do in those kind of longer run scenarios, <clears throat> uh, track bar adjustments, all that stuff. Right? Yes, we were struggling. We were struggling trying to like, do you get it working better on a long run, or do you wait for the last 25 and let it cool? Uh, we glued rotors all night long. We we kept a lot of heat in the front rotors, which kept the air pressure up and kept the car kind of tight. In the short runs, let it cool back off and and turn like it needed to. Yeah. We'll go to Andy. Andy Marquis, short track scene, Peyton. Yeah, we were just talking out there. You've tried so many years to win this race, but all the big races you have lost, all the times that, they, that you're in a race that's gotten the national stage, yeah. and how long you've been trying for this one, does this make up for the, the, sh the short track showdown a few <laughs> years, a couple decades ago, just about with Joey yeah. Logano and some of the other races? Does this make up for all that hardship? Like I said, it's all about timing, and tonight's our time, and, and I, it does. It, it definitely takes a sting out of some of those losses, but, um, yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a racer. I want to race. I, I, like I said, nobody's guaranteed anything. Nobody deserves anything. We just get up and work on our cars and try to make them the best we can, and I've been doing this a long time. There's a lot of people that come and go in racing, but we've been here for a long time, and um, my brother and myself, we, we've always made a good team. He puts in all the time and effort into this program, and uh, it's a true family effort. And how robust is the party going to be at Clarence's Steakhouse? Everybody's eating steaks tonight, that's for sure. So, uh, man, it just feels good to, to keep this thing in Ridgeway, to keep it at home right here. Like I said, there's a lot of greats just won in that orange and white car. And I guess we had to flip the colors this week to try to make it happen. Doc Love, Race 22 Radio. I want to talk about uh, the, throughout the race, you know, some guys say, man, I'm going to go this part of the race and then try to, you know, cruise for a little bit. It kind of looked like there was no opportunity to cruise. Were you guys like full on the entire race, it seemed? I'm going to be honest with you. I run the first 100 laps about as hard as I could to try to get a good read on my car. And, and me and Mike were able to get some track, track position and kind of get things settled out a little bit. And I seen how hard he was running. The track really widened out a lot tonight. We were able to get in really wide and high and kind of float it in and float it to the bottom. And um, that allowed us to be able to pull away from those guys a little bit. Uh, we put on two tires at lap 100, which was kind of early, but I think the strategy is what kind of everybody did. And um, I asked HC and going back to green there. I said, look, I said, do you think I ought to save any tire? He said, track position is more important. Go after it. I run the last 100 laps like I was qualifying them. When they told me I had a four-car length lead, it didn't matter. It didn't matter what was behind me. I just rolled the mirror up and took off. That's what we did. Cool. Any additional questions? We'll come up front, then we'll go to uh, Charles. Joshua Weatherman, Short Trek Report. Um, is this the same car that you've used to dominate Virginia all year long, or was this just its specific car for this specific race? No, so this was a Reynolds car that we run up at Dominion all year. This is a car that we won with last weekend at Dominion, and we had to kind of take it easy in that second race last week in order to be able to keep it in one piece because I knew that that's the car that I wanted here. And we were able to kind of keep the fenders on it. We didn't do anything to it this week other than throw some orange vinyl on it and repack the wheel bearings and put new brakes on it and brought it here. So um, that car has been very special to us. It's been a good car. And um, the Banks engine, Billy Banks, come to me many years ago now, and we, we kind of partnered up. And um, it, it's just good to put these guys in victory lane with these cars and motors. We'll go to Charles. Two, two questions. Charles, starting you. The um, one thing I want to ask you about about the is this your biggest win of your career and tell me why, and then talk about Clarence's Steakhouse and 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 what, what it'll mean to have your trophy, in, in there where everybody can see it every day. You know we've had a lot of big wins through the years, but this is something that's special. I had all the Pickerel family here from Clarence's. I had, you know, all of my sponsors. Everybody watches this race. You guys make it possible for everybody to watch it and keep up with it live on whether it be you know social media or, or the TV, whatever it is, and. Um, so many people watch this event. This is something you can hang your hat on for many years to come. Um, the, the, this, what makes this event special for guys like Clay Campbell and them to put on something like this for short track racers, we race at tracks that don't have good lighting. We race at tracks that don't have flow TV. We race at tracks that 
you know, have dirty bathrooms and things like that. And for <laughs> us to be able to, to come to this quality of a facility and put on a show with this many people watching is, um, is very special. That's why you have 93 cars show up. They, they don't show up for, for the – all of them don't show up for the clock. They don't show up for the money because it costs a lot to come here. They put a lot of time and effort into their cars, and it's a prestige of running at Martinsville Speedway. Now, is it a deal on the, on the clock that it goes in clearances? Is that a preset deal, or how does that work? No, it belongs there. It belongs there, and I'm going to give it to them. Okay. Do you get the second one? I'll try to see. I'll try to get one of the second ones. I'll probably put it right in front of my TV. I'll quit watching TV and just watch that thing tick all night. 